Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, March 9th, around 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A seismic swarm is happening now at Katla Volcano in Iceland. This is a very dangerous and explosive volcano. We'll get to it in just a moment. The big story, an atmospheric river is going to impact California starting now. Keep calm. It's boom time. Evacuation warnings are up for parts of Modesto, and Sierra chain controls are up as well. Over two feet of snow, additional snow has fallen over the last 48 hours, and more snow is on the way. KCRA3's weather team is calling Thursday a weather day alert with heavy rainfall gusting winds and the potential for flooding. There are flood watches and warnings out starting now through 10 a.m. Sunday, March 12th, over a large area. The valley could see one to three inches of rain, the foothills two to six inches of rain, and the mountains three to seven inches of rain. That means roadways flooding, small streams, creeks, rivers, and, well, people doing dumb stuff, maybe some mudslides. So we've retweeted this over at our Twitter, where you could follow us at Diamond the Dave. And another big storm is set to bring rain and snow to Utah with flooding possible there as well. And that snowstorm will head towards Michigan with four to seven inches forecast and the schools are likely to close. Now, have you heard this story? This is part of the Sierra Snow Ho Ho. A man 81 survives a week in a snowbank eating candy and croissants. That is amazing. An 81-year-old man survived being stuck in a snowbank for nearly a week by eating stuff in his car. Jerry Jorett, 81, was determined to make the drive from his mountain abode in Big Pine, California, to his family home in Gardnerville, Nevada. But he didn't make it. And interestingly enough, he lived to tell the tale. That is some good news coming out of that storm that doesn't seem to ever want to end. Take a look at this. This is the 48-hour snowfall totals. Over here on the snowfall analysis and the big winner here in the mountains just outside of Tahoe, another 18 inches there, and more snow is on the way. And this is an atmospheric river event that will be impacting the west. Snow across the plains and Great Lakes regions as well. Heavy rain with flooding, significant snow and strong winds will impact the west through Friday as a powerful storm moves ashore. Meanwhile, another system tracking across the center of the nation will bring accumulating snow across the central and northern plains through the lower Great Lakes region as well. And for the state of Hawaii, strong winds and dangerous surf conditions are in the forecast, especially here on the western shore of the Big Island. Winter storm watches and warnings uh, span the entire width of the U.S., but all in the northern tier. So let's take a look at the GFS model for snowfall, moving it through. There you can see that heavy snow in just 12 hours, 18 inches, is going to dump over a large area and that will rapidly increase here through Friday and into Saturday. So that system also moving east over the plains will make it to the northeast by the beginning of the weekend. And another system that will come out of the atmospheric river will start to move across the northern plains once again Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, which will be your fun day. A little bit more snow in the northeast early next week as well. And the west is forecast to be buried with another four to eight feet of snow falling in just the next few days. So records will be broken. And have you seen this rare snow tornado forms in the UK? This is in the Shetland Islands in Scotland. And this is your snow nado for the day. Hold macaroni. I thought it doesn't snow in the UK. Seismic update. Really no quakes of note. We have some activity here in the Camp Chocta with some aftershocks. 5.1 in Rusha. But overall, very low seismic profile here on the map. As we come over and take a look at this breaking story on Iceland geology, earthquake swarm in Katla Volcano. Today, March 9th, 
An earthquake swarm started in Katla volcano. This earthquake swarm is ongoing, and information in this article can go outdated quickly. The largest earthquakes at the writing of this article have a magnitude of M3.3 and another with an M3.4. A swarm of smaller earthquakes is now ongoing here in the Midrasyokal Glacier. And if Katla blows, it will blow big. It's difficult to know for sure what's going on in Kotla Volcano, but recent studies have shown magma is being in place there and quite an impressive amount. Now, Kotla hasn't erupted in any significant way in quite some time. 1918 was the last confirmed major eruption at VEI-4, but it erupts usually VEI-3 to 5. That is its standard here. Very few small eruptions. And it erupts quite often, usually around every 80 years, so it's long overdue for an eruption. Two uncertain eruptions were not obviously large magnitudes, so this could be the time for Kotla to go boom. So stay tuned for any updates needed, and we can quick come over here and check the current seismicity. And there is that seismic swarm, over several dozen quakes, and three of them three magnitude or higher. So that is an ongoing uptick at Katla Volcano in Iceland. Now, worldwide, everything is quiet on the Western Front except Katla, and we will update you if anything changes on Iceland. Space weather news update. The sun has been quiet for days, very low-level flaring for the last 24 hours in the sea range. There are sunspots, there are filaments, but the sun is acting like a grand solar minimum sun. It's quite quiet even at solar max here. Uh, anything changes, the solar indices are dropping, the three-day geomagnetic forecast is quiet. KP index sitting around two. Now, smoke from Australian bushfires, according to a new paper, depleted the ozone layer by up to 5% in a 2020 study. How do you like that, buddy? Lead researchers say the destruction was similar to process of Antarctic ozone hole forming each spring, but at much warmer temperatures. So check out the article. All the links will be below. Now, new NASA map details the 2023 20, and 2024 solar eclipses in the U.S. And they form X, marks the spot right here in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, <laughs> San Antonio. Where will you be for the 2023 and 2024 solar eclipses in the United States? NASA has released a new map that can help you decide where you'll be. Based on observations from several NASA missions, the map details the path of the moon's shadow as it crosses the contiguous U.S. during the annular, annular solar eclipse on October 14th, 2023, and the total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. Al Gore's a bore. So hopefully you're making plans to get out there and check out the eclipse and this is a pretty cool map i wonder if they're selling them oh cool right here you can download the full map so i highly recommend that and like i said all the links will be below giant eggshells reveal the secrets of madagascar's elephant birds these were ginormous now towering around nine feet tall half of that neck and weighing in more than 300 pounds, ostriches are the biggest birds on the planet today. But there was once an even bigger bird which roamed Madagascar before dying out about a thousand years ago. And they must have been delicious. It's called the elephant bird, and there are a large amount of eggshells littering Madagascar, and the people glue them back together and sell them here at the local market. Elephant birds would have weighed over a thousand pounds. They lay eggs that are about a foot and a half in length. Take a look at that. So, pretty amazing. Over three times larger than a nine-foot ostrich. That would have been a terrifying bird, to say the least. Here is the paper, Molecular Exploration of Fossil Eggshells Uncovers, the hidden lineage of a giant extinct bird. They think it actually flew over onto the island of Madagascar about 30 million years ago and then evolved to become a land bird and lost the ability for flight and grew to ginormous proportions. So check out the paper. 
Now, here's an interesting uh, article. Oldest reference to the Norse god Odin was found in a Danish treasure. And here you can see that treasure. The inscription, he is Odin's man, is seen in a round half circle over the head of a figure on a golden broktitat unearthed in Vindelev, Denmark, in late 2020. Lisbeth Immer, a runologist with the National Museum in Copenhagen, said the inscription represented the first solid evidence of Odin being worshipped as early as the 5th century, at least 150 years earlier than the previous oldest known reference to Odin, which, in fact, was a brooch found in southern Germany and dated to the second half of the 6th century. Also notice the swastika. Quite fascinating. Now, an astonishing discovery reveals water in our solar system may have originated billions of years before any of the planets or even the sun. Take a look at this. V883 Ori is a remarkable protostar that boasts temperatures that are just hot enough for converting water into its circumstellar disk into gas. This gas can be studied by radio astronomers to trace the origins of the water, and it seems to be happening before the solar system even forms. This is the first confirmation that the water in our solar system may come from the same place as the water in disks surrounding protostars everywhere in the universe. And they have some fantastic videos here of what we're talking about. We could just probably play one. Pretty fantastical. There is the proto-disc filled with liquid water, out 80 astronomical units from the center. Now, just for reference, Pluto is 39 astronomical units away, so this water would be extending twice the distance that Pluto is in the protostellar disk, and that would be a lot of water, oceans, in fact, of water, extending out twice the distance to Pluto. So pretty fascinating stuff coming out from astrophysics. Now NASA is monitoring an asteroid that could collide with Earth on Valentine's Day in 2046. And the internet is going crazy. Twitter has exploded with the doomsday Valentine's, well, asteroid. Maybe it's a comet. Now, out of the millions of asteroids in our solar system, there is a very small fraction known to potentially impact Earth. But scientists just found a new one two weeks ago that so far seems to pose one of the greatest risks of them all. Now, the asteroid known at 2023 DW was only first discovered on February 26, according to the European Space Agency, and has now been added to the, agents, the agency's risk list. That's fantastic news. 2023 DW has a Torino scale ranking of 1, meaning that it is currently predicted to pose no unusual level of danger, according to the scale. Researchers believe that it has about a 50-meter diameter, about the length of an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So it's not even a big one. ESA estimates that the asteroid has a 1 in 607 chance of impacting Earth, so this is nothing more than fear-mongering. And as the object gets closer, this number will either increase or decrease. And obviously, we will know as it gets closer, have a much better idea on if it will impact or not. But it's looking like no, less than a tenth of a percent of a chance of hitting. Now, what's more likely to happen? How about a piece of space debris hitting a satellite? Yeah, the International Space Station had to fire its thrusters to avoid a collision with a satellite. Yep, the ISS was playing dodgeball with debris and other satellites in low Earth orbit, which is becoming more common. And then you all know about when one, there's a cascading effect where if you smash up one asteroid and debris gets launched out into space, it could be a satellite catastrophe. Now, scientists have discovered an enzyme that converts air into electricity. That is insane. 
This discovery was made by a team of scientists led by Rins Grinta, Ashley Kropp, a PhD student, and Professor Chris Greening from the Monash University Biomedicine Discovery Institute in Melbourne, Australia. Recent work by the team has shown that many bacteria use hydrogen from the atmosphere as an energy source in nutrient-poor environments. We've known for some time that bacteria can cause the trace hydrogen in the air as a source of energy to help them grow and survive. But now, in this Nature paper, the researchers extracted the enzyme responsible for using atmospheric hydrogen from bacterium called Mycobacterium smegmatis, and they showed that this enzyme called HUC turns hydrogen gas into electrical current. What a breakthrough and an awesome picture. Links will be below. Here's the paper, Structural Basis for Bacterial Energy Extraction from Atmospheric Hydrogen. Say that five times fast. More weird science. Scientists revive a zombie virus that spent 48,500 years frozen in permafrost. And they're probably replicating it, and it's getting loose now as we speak. What could go wrong? Well, I'll tell you what could go wrong. You could go hiking and not realize that the bears have come out of hibernation and they're hungry. Yes, on March 7th, just two days ago in Yellowstone National Park, officials took to Twitter to announce that local officials spotted the first grizzly emerging from hibernation of 2023. And they're hungry. And shortly after the grizzlies come out, the black bears come out. They're hungry too. So... Be alert. The bears are awake. Now, here's some bad news. Go woke, go broke. 37.9 million Americans are living in poverty, according to the U.S. Census. The problem could be far worse, according to this article. How could it be worse than 11.6% of the population living in poverty? That's my question. I thought that we were like the greatest nation on earth while we send billions of dollars to fund foreign proxy wars, our citizens are starving. And that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe.